Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Monday mountain weather update. My first stop is going to be up at Big Sky, Montana, where they're reporting an inch of new snow, and that's your Lone Peak tram cam up there this morning. And man, it is cold up there. They're reporting an air temp of minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not even wind chill. That's minus 22 up on Lone Peak, Mid Mountain, and also the Mountain Village up there. And that's not the only place it is well below zero. Uh, let me take you up to Breckenridge. So this is the uh, um, the cam up there, a little bit of snow coming down, and it is about 15 to 20 degrees below zero up there this morning in Breckenridge with this little trailing front. That's what did this. That's what dropped that inch of snow up there in Big Sky, and it rolled south through Montana, and now it's rolling south through parts of Colorado and bringing us this light snowfall this morning. In fact, here's radar, and you can see some of the blue now moving down through Pueblo and southern Colorado. What's left over the mountains is hidden, it's shrouded, it's sitting low, radar's overshooting it, but nonetheless, still some light snow accumulation happening up in the mountains of Colorado. Um, let me look across the west, and uh, there is just basically nothing after this little trailing front. Um, there are some other fronts that are going to come straight out of Canada, and we'll look at those in the forecast, but right now, there's just nothing going on. Up in the northeast, our little coastal low is now departing Maine. Dropped a couple, three inches of new snow in a number of places. Now we're just looking at lake effect off Ontario and Erie. Uh, in fact, all the Great Lakes are showing signs of some lake effect. And this is going to be the pattern for quite a while in the Northeast. All right, let me take you back, give you the lay of the land. So we're back to water vapor in the low levels. So oranges and reds are going to be your drier air. The whites and the blues are going to be your moisture. I mean, you can right away, you can see this Arctic air mass this big area of gray sitting across a lot of the lower 48. That is very cold air right now across a lot of the lower 48. So what's happening is there's a little front right here. That's the little trailing front, and that's moving to the south. Um, now behind it, you're going to get a front right here. There's an area of low pressure here and another one behind it. So there's activity lined up. Now these pieces of energy in the form of fronts actually will come out of Canada, run down through BC, Alberta, and then move through Montana, Wyoming, and into Colorado over the next five, six, seven, eight, nine days. That's going to be the pattern. All right, so here are my bullet points this morning. So residual snow for Colorado and New Mexico uh, today with this little trailing front. Then there's another minor front that will ride that same flow out of the north through Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, 121 and 122. It looks very small, but there's something there. The stronger front is 124, 25, and 26. That comes out of the Pacific Northwest, BC, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico. That one appears to have more snow accumulation with it. Um, certainly more than what we're seeing uh, with this one and even this little minor front for 121, 122. Here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for Big Sky, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for example, in Big Sky, You've got some light snow coming on 122, light to moderate 124. So you can see that little front on 122 and then a bigger front 124, 5, and 6. For the Wasatch, it's really a waiting game for 124 and 125, light to moderate. And actually, my numbers for the Wasatch have crept up. They have gone up a little bit since yesterday's update. Tetons, 124, pretty light. You're kind of out of the flow with this. You're just a little bit far to the west. Um, Colorado, 120 today, we've got light snow accumulation, and then 122, and then light to moderate for 125, 26. And there will definitely be some areas that go moderate uh, with moderate accumulation on with that second uh, front. Uh, interior BC, light uh, tomorrow, and then light to moderate 123. And actually, for the first time in days, days, Tahoe's on the board with very light snow accumulation on 125. We'll see. In the northeast, uh, light this morning with that departing low and lake effect. And then your next shot is 125 and 126. Drilling down here on um, Alta, Utah, this is effective about 9,000 feet. So there's our column for today, the 20th. There's 21. There's Wednesday. There's Thursday, the beginning of Thursday. And we're dry from here on out. This model doesn't have anything. Now, the next, that front on 124, 5, and 6 will bring snow as it appears right now to the Wasatch. It's just not showing up here. It's beyond the scope of this. But you can see the temps today well below zero this morning, like minus 8 to start, and then up to potentially zero 
for the high. Tomorrow it's up to 19, so quite a bit warmer tomorrow. But you will notice a wind chill, especially this afternoon. Look at some of these gusts, 30 to 35 miles an hour, along with temperatures around zero. That's going to be a cold day up there at Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, all the resorts. Um, and the winds actually stay kind of gusty tomorrow and Wednesday with gusts of 30 to 35 miles per hour. So a few days of wind in this quick flow. All right, let me take you into Colorado. Uh, here's Steamboat. Here's the time height forecast. I'm looking for green. That's going to be your higher humidity or moisture content. 72-hour forecast. You read that from right to left. So you can see the green column over the top of uh, the mountains of Colorado today. That's our front that's moving to the south right now through southern Colorado. And then you see those two little areas of green, a little higher in the atmosphere there. That's that tiny front for 121. I believe that's how I'd have it timed out for Colorado. 122, that's that light shot coming through. And then the bigger shot would be 125 and 26, and it's really hard to see, but some moisture starts to increase there late 22 into 23, and that would certainly be the case with more green showing up by 24 and 25. So you can see very light snow chances for the next uh, two or three days up there. Bottom line, let's track the snow in time. Here's snow accumulation over time and we're going to start this uh, we're going to start it at lunchtime today you can see the light blues anything in light blue that's under three inches of accumulation so you've got some of that up in the northeast you've got some of that coming off ontario and lake Erie. Um, and, and obviously you've got a little bit of that across colorado and northern new mexico all right let's move ahead here we are by late today uh, 10 p.m a little leftover snow in new mexico and look what's happening in southern texas that is going to be um a unique setup. Let me move ahead in time. Here's tomorrow morning early at 5 a.m. Look at the blue showing up over southern Texas and Louisiana. We're going to see snow accumulation down there. And also look to the northeast. Look off uh, Ontario. You've got snow accumulation happening. You've got snow coming off uh, south towns of uh, Buffalo as well. Um, okay, let's move ahead. That's 5 a.m. Here's lunchtime. Ooh, look what's happening down there. We could see four or five inches of snow. Once you pop into the greens, that's three to six. Yellows would be over six inches of accumulation. Houston, New Orleans, all these places are under winter storm warnings. I'm not kidding. Winter storm warnings for the Gulf Coast. Um, that's 11 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, here we are by dinner time tomorrow. Look at that. Maybe even some snow for the panhandle of uh, Florida. Still lake effect going up there in the northeast. All right, here is early on Wednesday. Look at that storm down in the in the panhandle of, of uh, Florida. All right, I want to draw your attention to this action coming out of Alberta, Montana, and kind of brushing Wyoming. That's that tiny front. Look at it coming south, and it, it may deliver a brief snow shower to the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And then it's out of here. It's very, very fast. All right, here we are by, this is late on Thursday. Here's the early morning hours on Friday. Now you can see the stronger cold front coming out of Canada. Dropping down through the Pacific Northwest, parts of Idaho, Montana, BC. Here we are by lunchtime on Friday. Here's late on Friday. Now it's starting to drop down into parts of uh, Wyoming. All right, here we are by the early morning hours on Saturday. Starting to make its way down into Utah and the central to northern mountains of Colorado. Denver will get snow accumulation out of this. Here we are by the afternoon of Saturday. Look at that. A little bit of snow for Tahoe as well and down to Mammoth. So that's in my forecast. Here we are by late uh, on Saturday. And look at that snow coming through parts of Utah. This is early Sunday. Here's, a, here's 11 a.m. on Sunday. Look at that front coming through. Afternoon Sunday in the 27 it's lingering so this model lingers this front for a longer time over colorado and new mexico into the 27th very interesting there's 5 p.m on monday the 27th there's late on the 27th there's early tuesday so this that's an interesting setup that is definitely a stronger front all right here's my forecast all of today through the 26th, we'll start in the Wasatch. My number's now 3 to 6 inches, largely because of that second front, 124, 25, and 26 that comes through. Definitely has more to it. Um, one or two for the Tetons, not a lot there. Five or six through Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, and Red Lodge. Lighter accumes up in northwest Montana. Um, two, three, four, five inches up interior BC, and a little bit for the Pacific Northwest. 
with that 124, 25, 26 front and a tiny bit for Tahoe down to Mammoth. In Colorado, some pretty big numbers along the I-70 corridor north, especially as you go east of Vail. Vail East, um, from Vail to Copper, down into Summit County, Continental Divide, Loveland A Basin, Water Park, Cameron Pass, Eldora, Steamboat could be looking at potentially 6 to 12 inches of accumulation across that entire area. Fives and sixes through Aspen Mountain, Snowmass, Crested Butte, and less as you go into southern Colorado and northern New Mexico. Okay, up in the northeast, a little bit of leftover snow today, and then that other ch chance of snow comes in, I believe that was 125 and 126. So you can see what I'm forecasting here. Pretty light stuff, one to three inches will do it for pretty much everything here. Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. More over Snow Ridge because you've got at least a few days of lake effect, so you're going to get some blow off from that. All right, we'll end on the big western map here. Uh, again, some of the numbers have gone up, and we're looking pretty good here. You've got two small fronts and then one more important front. The stronger front is 124, 25, 26, and maybe even trickling in to 127. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.